what is happening YouTube and Weight Loss Warriors. It's your boy C Dub and I'm back with another video. Today guys, I'm going to rant about calories and diets and metabolism and I'm going to do it right after this. What is going on YouTube and Weight Loss Warriors? It's your boy C Dub and if you're new to the channel, I lost 125 pounds using the OMED method of intermittent fasting and thank you for joining me today. And those of you that are returning and you're already a weight loss warrior, you know I love y'all. Thank you so much for your support. Guys, today I want to tackle a tough topic and that topic is really about metabolism and calories and calorie lies and how it all fits together and try to help you navigate through all the craziness that we hear on diets and about diets and we're going to do it right now. Hey guys, let's start with calories. So we, we always hear calories in, calories out, and then now through the fasting community, all the time we hear calories don't matter, you can eat whatever you want, that it's all hormones, and we're lost, and we're like, we, I, I really don't know what to do, I don't know what to think, is, is this guy telling the truth, or is that guy telling the truth, who's got my back, what do I need to know, and there's so much that goes into all of that, I thought that we just needed to break it all down. So let's start off with calories. So calories... Uh, are basically you know what we take in turns our in energy and how much energy is what we're taking in giving us um, whether it's short-term energy or long-term energy because obviously the energy you get from a Snickers candy bar is going to be different than the energy you get from a banana but nonetheless they both give you energy so what do we do to navigate ourselves through all that stuff well the first thing you got to understand is that the calories do do matter how much you're putting in does matter and you can do everything else right and put in too much calories and you will eventually store it. Even though you're burning fat all day long, if you're storing more fat than you're burning, then you're going to gain weight. And that's just a fact. A lot of people don't want to admit that, but that's just a fact. Now, it is hard to overeat if you're only eating a couple of times a day and there's all of those elements too. But we have to understand that the calories that come on labels aren't really true either. And so oftentimes, we say we're eating this many calories but we're not eating enough and I'll give you an example I saw another YouTube video I will link it in the description below uh, where a guy actually went and he ate six different times in a day and he took all the items that he bought he bought two of and he took those items to a actual machine a doctor that that puts things through or a scientist I mean that puts things through a calorie counting machine and actually tells you what energy is in that piece of food and out of the the six different things that he that he looked at that day five of them under counted the calories so that's on the label guys only one subway subway was the only one that gave an accurate count of how many calories he ate so he thought he was eating you know a certain amount of calories he ended up eating over 500 calories more than that which if you think about it if you think you're eating at maintenance and you're eating 500 calories more than maintenance you're actually gaining a pound a week so guys it's very easy to overeat those calorie labels don't have to be accurate. Obama passed a law that said that they have to have them if they're distributing the, the food in 20 or more locations. They have to have these labels. The problem is he never put down that they have to be accurate. So these people just throw an estimate down there and of course they're going to lowball it. They're going to say the muffin's only 400 calories when it's really 700 calories because 400 calories you might eat for breakfast, 700 calories you might pass for breakfast. So that's basically the way that that whole system works. It's a scam. So you're probably overeating anyways. So that's something that, that we have to think about. And then we have to think about, we hear all the time, that there are people, and they've, they've looked at them. You can look at the Biggest Losers an example and the Biggest Losers study that was out there. I'll try to link that below too. The Biggest Losers study, guys, they went out there and they looked at the Biggest Loser contestants and they saw that these people were after their... Uh, off the show, years after they're off the show, they cannot eat at the same level they were and that their metabolism was wrecked and that they can still gain weight only eating a thousand calories a day. Their body had made a different set point and now it went. So because they ate low there, you would think that on the other end of that, you can train your body to eat high calories too. So there's some balance as to what your energy is and what your energy input is and, and how much you're putting out and what you're doing. All of that stuff matters. So how do you find the sweet spot? How do you understand the, the calorie and energy input and what you're doing and what it's going to do for you? So 
if you're thinking about it and you're just, a, a, you know, you're, you're sitting around most of the day, you're stationary, you're not um, doing a lot of work, your body is not going to burn a lot of energy and you don't have to give it as much fuel as somebody that's working out every day, that's somebody that's power lifting and running and doing all of these um, activities, working hard all day. It's going to be a different level. I see a couple of times people will say that they're intermittent fasters and they're struggling at work and they're working these heavy duty jobs and they're trying to fast through those jobs and they're having a harder time than somebody that's just working a desk job. So you've got to understand that your body is going to have different demands based on how much energy output you're, you're putting out and then in return the energy that you take in. Uh, one of my friends which has a, a degree in nutrition one time told me and he's right about this he told me when I was obese but I didn't even understand him he said never eat for what you are going with for what you have done never eat for what you have done eat for what you're about to do and you'll never be overweight and I was like what is this guy talking about but now I understand what he was trying to say if I'm going about to hike a mountain I can eat more than if I'm not gonna play video games all day and so the, the balance has to be done within you. And you have to understand um, where you are at versus what you are doing and, and where that, that, that energy goes. But also understand that the timing of when you eat matters to your metabolism and, and, and wrecking your metabolism. So if you go on a crash diet and you only eat 800 calories a day, then your body will eventually start to think all we're getting in is 800 calories let's slow down everything on the inside let's move at a slower pace let's digest slower let's move less energy let's push ourselves less and so it will adjust to the calories you're bringing in so as your weight comes down you will have a harder time because you've restricted those calories where if you eat in a very small deficit and you put exercise in it to burn more energy now your body is like, okay, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. And that weight loss will happen at a faster time while keeping your calorie intake levels up. And if you're doing that and adding things like strength training and doing things like that, you're going to get your body to move even faster or be able to intake more calories. The reason that I think that OMAD is so powerful for me and why OMAD solves a lot of these issues that we have through slowing down metabolisms and weight loss over time is the simple fact that we're eating like uh, close to two uh, I think it's 1900 pounds as an average American you eat 1900 pounds of food a day I mean a year so you're putting in a ton of food into your body daily and uh, four to five pounds of food daily in your body just an average person and when you do OMAD now you're only eating one third of that time but your calorie content level does not dissipate to a point in which, if you're doing it right, to a point in which you're only at 800 calories. You should be eating a big meal, over 1,000, 1,500, you know, 1,800, whatever it is, depending if you're male or female or whatever else. If you're male and you're eating 1,800 and you're female and you're eating 1,500, you're probably going to be okay. And these big meals that you're eating allow your body to never feel like you are it needs to slow its metabolism down but you're still going to burn through the energy that you've been taken through the course of overnight and halfway through the next day so you're still going to get like eight hours six hours four hours of nothing but automatic fat burning mode and so even if your body gets used to taking the, the calories you're intaking at 1800 and using them all day and you're done by noon burning your 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 calories that you've been taking that 1800 you're going from noon until like let's say six when you're eating dinner you're going through that six hours in fat burning mode and that is weight that is being lost off of your body while your metabolism still stays high and I think that is what makes uh, OMAD beautiful um, calorie counting guys it, I do I recommend you do it I think some people it's helpful I think it's good to know about where you're at I think in time, you don't have to count calories. I think you know when you're overeating and when you're not overeating. I think when you're doing OMAD, you sit down and you just eat until you know you're good and you move on. One last thought that I wanted to say, because I did hear a couple of people in the comments and through other videos and th through other forms uh, of fasting that they struggle with the fact that they're worried about under eating on OMAD. And so there's two different uh, things I wanted to say about that and, and calories in and everything else is that 
if you are under eating on OMAD and you are overweight or obese, it's okay. Your body is going to get the extra nutrients it needs through your body fat. It's fine. You have the fat stored. You've been storing it sometimes your whole life for that moment that you're under eating. So the OMAD is fine. Go ahead and be hungry and let your body attack the fat and let it eat it. And if you're, you're eating a little bit on the low side of calories, it's going to be okay. You're not, gonna, you're not going to destroy yourself, especially if you're still eating a decent amount in that meal. Then on the other side, if you are someone that is at their maintenance weight, their body range is in a normal range, it is a big concern to worry about having enough nutrients. And you just got to balance that to make sure you're eating a well-balanced diet. You know what that is. I don't have to babysit you on it. Um, but, you know, you can under-eat if you're at maintenance. But if you're not at maintenance, guys, come on. Don't talk to me about under-eating. Your body will fix whatever it needs to due to the... Um, due to the body fat you already have on it. And if you know you've overdone it, just fast another day because your body can live off of the fat. That's why the fat is there. As long as you have the fat, your body will pull the nutrients out of it it needs. All right, guys, I'll talk to you on the next one. I hope you enjoy it. Click on my face. I appreciate it. Stay on the channel. Thank you. Peace.